Hi there, this is Janet Simmons and welcome to a short video about learning in an apprenticeship. We will begin with two analysis questions and then look at the essential skills of apprenticeship learning. Next, we'll examine participation in apprenticeships and learning culture. Then we'll finish up with two synthesis questions. The first analysis question helps put you in the shoes of an apprentice. If you are an apprentice, what do you think you would need to help you learn and grow? The second question is from the organization's perspective. Think of an organization that you're familiar with. What or how would the organization need to change to accommodate apprenticeship learning? All workers in Canada are expected to have nine essential skills. The following slides provides the list. It should be obvious that different occupations require different complexities and levels of achievement within these skill sets. For example, the pictures of tradespeople in this video all need to use digital technology. They must use their problem-solving skills, think critically, and plan and organize tasks and projects. The final essential skill is continuous learning. This is the ongoing process of improving skills and knowledge. This continuous learning often includes on-the-job training plus upgrading skills to maintain accreditation. Remember, this is not just for apprentices, but every worker in Canada. Workers are expected to learn on the job and learn through formal training and self-study. It is the individual's responsibility to understand how we best learn and turn information into knowledge. Finally, we have to know where to find learning resources. Most apprentices enroll in the program when they're in their 20s, but there is an increasing number of people who are switching careers later in life and entering into apprenticeships. Regardless of age, all apprentices enjoy hands-on learning, which is often why they enter the trades. This quote by the Canadian Apprenticeship Forum helps us understand that there is much more to apprenticeship learning than hands-on learning. And this, along with the gap between leaving high school and entering the program, may be a problem, as some learners may have forgotten or are out of practice with math and problem-solving skills. This may account for the low completion rate. Research shows that there is 17% dropout rate, while 27% take too long to complete their apprenticeship, which researchers believe contributes to the high rate of learners who leave the program and do not complete their apprenticeships. It is interesting that 27% of apprentices take longer to complete the requirements, but you cannot always blame the apprentice, as sometimes the employer is reluctant for the apprentice to write the C of Q for fear they will lose a skilled worker to their competition. Another problem apprentices face that you may relate to is exam anxiety. According to the CAF, Researchers have identified exam anxiety as one of the reasons for low completion rates. Older apprentices may fear their essential skills are inadequate. Some apprentices may be unsure about where to go for help, while others may not want to admit that they have a learning disability. Writing an exam can be daunting for those learners. Fortunately, the Red Seal website offers preparation or mock exams. This helps learners build their exam confidence. This also allows learners to self-assess their knowledge so they can find areas they are weak in. The Elgin Middlesex Oxford Workforce Planning and Development Board found that learners often can't pass a C of Q. There is no time frame for completing the final exam. There's a lack of incentive to pass the final exam. There's a time lapse from the exam booking and the actual exam date. There is poor preparation courses for exams and the lack of valid exams for specific trades. All of these are barriers. The Planning and Development Board recommends preparatory exams, increasing awareness of completion incentives, and providing online C of Q sample tests and tutoring as solutions. What other recommendations do you have to organizations to overcome these barriers? Fuller and Unwin's research into apprenticeship workplace learning recommends participation by apprentices in multiple communities of practice, inside and outside of the workplace. 
Additionally, the primary community of practice has a shared participatory memory gained, for example, through having a long tradition of providing apprenticeships. They also recommend that the breadth of experience be fostered by planned rotation. Finally, Fuller and Unwin recommend that effective apprenticeship programs need to aim for gradual transition to increase participation. Apprenticeships have a different learning culture than most workplaces. Here we can see how open to opportunities or expansive apprenticeship workplace learning can be. Note that teamwork, community, and groups play a large role in apprenticeships. This helps apprentices and everyone involved to learn new skills. As with all types of employment and learning, there are restrictions. Fuller and Unwin found this is mostly in the lack of workplace mobility and restricted job design. Additionally, there is a top-down approach to innovation. Try to answer these two questions after you watch the required videos and have gone over the required readings. We haven't really talked about the use of technology in apprenticeships, but this is your chance to reflect on how the apprenticeship model is evolving to include technology. Apprenticeship learning is much different than the other types of learning we've looked at over the past few weeks. Dual apprenticeships are now widely used in Canada, the US, and in Europe. Incorporating apprenticeship learning practices into workplace learning is a challenge, but extremely beneficial. Thanks for watching.